And we're back, everyone. Another win for Celtic on Saturday. Uh, since the World Cup, guys, we've played nine, we've won eight, drawn one, scored 26 and conceded four. We've advanced in two cup competitions and we've maintained our nine-point advantage at the top of the table. Uh, it's not bad being a Celtic fan right now, is it, Scott? Awesome. Pretty good. How, how are you guys? Sorry, I should have probably started the video by asking how you are. Oh, very well, thank you. Very well. Things are things are very nice here over here in the sunny Australia, mate. I can't complain. Um, all was well. Uh, just getting back into routine. Kids are back at school. But um, nice to see, like you said, Celtic get another victory. Uh, it was quite comfortable in the end uh, over the weekend. And they've got a nice little break now before before the next one. Yeah, I mean the, the the team's in a good place, Scott. But I still get the impression there's a there's a lot more to come from them. And I think Angie even said that after the game. You know, we're we're still to get Jota fully firing. Uh, I think Awata is going to be a big part of the team when he properly comes in, and potentially a new a new striker in the coming days as well. So um, I think you know that's going to lift the team as well. So definitely more to come. Um, Asim, how how are you feeling about things after the weekend? Yeah, it's like you said, those stats speak for themselves. We're on a, in a right good position in all competitions. And as far as Saturday goes, couldn't really ask for much more. Obviously, when you're coming up against teams from a, a lower division in the Cup, it's, you know, you've got nothing to gain, really, because everyone's expecting you to win. And, you know, it's, there's a, a potential shock on the cards. But I thought we were, after the first 10, 15 minutes, we were pretty ruthless. And, yeah, it was a comfortable and enjoyable afternoon. Aaron Moy, Scott, he's a, he's a hell of a player, isn't he? Um, you've probably seen more of him over the years than, than we have with the, the Socceroos. Has he exceeded expectations so far for you at Celtic or is he kind of everything you expected? It's certainly not my expectations, but certainly majority of Celtic supporters. You know, if you, you turn the clock back six months ago, uh, there was a lot of negative uh, supporters about Aaron, you know, at the football club. So, you know, they've had to eat their words a little bit, I have to say, uh, in terms of the performances and, and how he just keeps getting better and better. With with each game that goes by, um, he's performing even better and, and keeping O'Reilly out. So who would have thought of that at the start of the season? Uh, and he's adding goals to his games now, which is fantastic. And I think the World Cup was great for Aaron uh, in terms of that playing in that high level and, and doing his fitness the world of good as well. Um, and he's he's just fitted in like a glove since he's come back, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. And I think more to come from Aaron Moy as well, like so many of his teammates. Um, what what about the, the two new signings as well that we've seen over the last week? We've had Kobayashi and Iwata both kind of uh, making their debuts for Celtic. I, I think both have looked pretty decent so far, Scott, albeit not against brilliant opposition but certainly a couple of players who can offer us something between now and the end of the season yeah absolutely i think I keep going back to the, the strength and depth of you know andrew's squads and how he keeps building it um and it's been a great time to get these two some minutes uh, under their belt as well um like you said they're probably against weaker oppositions uh, to get them up and running give them a bit of confidence um but will they make the first 11 in any time soon? I think it'll be a struggle, uh, to be perfectly honest. But, um, you know, you just never know in terms of injuries and, and whatnot, you know, in the run-in now. Uh, it's important to have these types of players, you know, ready to come in. And we've seen that with the way that Ange likes to play his football, that sometimes, uh, you know, injuries do happen and occur with the, the, the high intensity levels. So uh, these players need to be ready. And there's certainly strength and depth in numbers, that's for sure. I'm quite excited about Iwata, Asim. Uh, I know you know we only saw him for 45 minutes on Saturday, and as I say, he'll play against better teams than than Morton. But I think there's something quite interesting going on with him, and I, I think he's going to play quite a big part uh, between now and the end of the season. Yeah, I thought he looked neat and tidy. Like you said, it obviously wasn't tested much, and. It was a comfortable game to for him to come into, and Andrew said obviously he'll be he's still got to get his fitness up and things like that. He's not played in quite a while, but the thing that excites me with him is Ange having worked with him before, so you know you know you know what you Ange knows what he's getting, and the fact that Ange's talks so highly of him just excites you as a fan that you know he's going to offer quite a bit. I think obviously when Ud Idiguchi came into that role, there was 
a lot of people that said that would he be able to kind of make an inroads into the first team and it hasn't really worked out for him. But um, you, I think it's going to be slightly different with the latter. Um, obviously, just from the early glimpses, he seems like he's he's someone who's quite comfortable in that position in terms of he was demanding the ball and he was kind of dictating play. So yeah, I think with more game time, we'll, I think we'll see we'll see his qualities. And as for Kobayashi, I think he's now kind of cemented himself as as that um, player that if Starfelt or, or Vickers are out, he's the one that will come in. Um, I think this chat obviously you said about Jens maybe leaving, and and Welsh has been out the picture. So yep, he's again he's looked pretty neat and tidy. So we'll see him in the coming weeks, I'm sure as well. And my final wee comment in the weekend, Scott Kyogo just just can't stop scoring. Uh, 20 is he hit 20 now I think he's in 20 goals for the season um and we're, we're we're still in January Scott I mean this guy could hit 30 goals 35 goals potentially absolutely why not um you know he's certainly uh since the world cup uh come back in in great form uh, you know after you know, those couple of games where Celtic were struggling to probably you know maximize their chances that, that that they were having um he's come good uh, and and he's just really really hitting form now um and it's great to see you know he scores all different types of goals as well doesn't he um you know and he's always a threat in and around that box and he's learned quickly at celtic to get in the danger areas that's been the biggest thing and that's why he's scoring lots of goals and again his finish on the weekend was just wonderful wasn't it yeah i mean he, he's just on fire at the moment he's not really like He's impacting games with his goals, but he's not really getting involved too much in the game as well. I, I just love that part of him at the moment. Like his his uh, his his awareness and his his positioning is is just so good, and he's turning a real poacher for us. And I I had this conversation with John. I don't remember him being exactly like that last season. It feels like his game slightly altered this season. Um, but you, you, I mean, the goal returns brilliant, Asim. I feel like he's he's. Since the World Cup, um, he seems a lot more clinical. Like I know the argument against him previously was he missed a lot of chances, but it was perhaps he was doing a lot more other work, getting involved. And now it seems like he's less involved in the build-up play. But when the ball gets to him now, like that, both those finishes were brilliant at the weekend. You look at his two goals against St Mirren as well. As Scott said, they're all different kinds of goals, and you do now feel when he's one on one, he's putting that away. Whereas I think earlier in the season, he, he was missing quite a few and. Um, it's great to see that because we've seen this in the early parts of last season and then to for him now to, to pick that up, 20 goals already, we've got what maybe another 19-20 games probably this season, he can easily um, hit that 30 plus mark and I don't know when the last time one of our strikers did that. Did you ever get close Scott? What, what was your best day? Uh, Scott, your best Scott was close one year. Uh, 31, I think so, so I got past 30. Um, I, I never quite got to the close enough to forty like he possibly could. I think um, he's just in absolutely wonderful form. Um, and look, like I said, I think um, he certainly knows now where to be. He knows that he needs numbers. Everyone, you know, when you're a Celtic striker, you're always judged by your goals. I love it when you said, "Oh, you know, he's he's not really doing much bar scoring goals." <laughs> I think I love that because that's what he's meant to be doing. <laughs> But, um, you know, particularly at Celtic, when you have a lot of quality around you, I think um, sometimes simplifying your game. I think we talked about this last week, you know, simplifying your game, um, understanding the qualities that are around you and getting in the right areas to keep getting the chances. And he keeps getting the chances, guys. You know, so as critical as people want to be about, you know, at certain times that he doesn't score, um, 20 is a great return for this time of the year. So he must be doing something right and he keeps getting into those positions. So he, he'll keep getting the chances. So that tells you that he's definitely going to get over 30. Um, it's just whether or not he can get close to 40. Would you reckon, Asim? I mean, Scott's not giving us an exact number. I want you to give us an exact number, mate. How many is he going to hit? Can you imagine he took penalties as well? Well, I don't think it'd make much difference. We don't seem to get that. No, it's not probably the right week to say that, but <laughs> um, I think he could. Well, we've got, like I say, we've got about 18, 19 games at least uh, left. And at the rate he's going right now, he's on 20. I think 35. I think 35 is, is definitely achievable. Um, we've obviously got another striker coming in. So I know, I know recently he's taken, he's, he's started every game since the, the World Cup. Um, so I don't know if there'll be a bit more rotation when when the new guy comes in, but 
yeah, I think 35 is definitely doable for him and that would be an absolutely uh, unbelievable return. Yeah. Um, let's talk transfer window then, guys. You may have noticed, uh, I think we're now officially into the final week of the January window and we're expecting a wee bit of business. Maybe maybe not as frantic as we've had in, in years gone by at Celtic, but I think some, some stuff to be sorted out. One thing that's already sorted out is that Josip Juranovic is no longer a Celtic player. Uh, he's the first Ange signing to depart the club permanently. Um I've had my, my final, final say on him yesterday. I got the, the hankies out and had a bit of a cry in front of everyone. Um, so I'll, I'll not say anything today, guys. I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, I'll ask you both the question, starting with you, Scott. How do you think Juranovic will be remembered as a Celtic player? I look, he'll be, he'll be remembered, you know, fondly. Um, it was short-lived, realistically, though, you know, but... Uh, in terms of the time that, that he was here, it, it was a successful time. He won two trophies. Um, he did his job magnificently when he first came in. He played out of position when he first came in. Let's let's get that right. Played at left back for a bit, and then he re- made the right back position. You know, he's only had a good tussle with Tony Ralston throughout. Um, but look, I, I think you know he, he's 28 years of age. I think Ange hit the nail on the head. You know, at, at times. You get to Celtic, you, you hit your, your threshold in terms of your value at the football club and what they're willing to pay you. And I, and I think the boy has done exceptionally well, obviously got to a semi-final of World Cup and he's seen the opportunity to cash in and so have Celtic. So I think it's a win-win for everyone uh, in that sense. And, you know, Andrew's been on the front foot uh, as always and, and brought the replacements in before they've gone and they've certainly done that with Juranovic. So I think, it will, I think he goes with the blessings of the Celtic fans for sure and uh, a very respectful sort of uh, period for him here and, and everyone will, will certainly praise him for that. Yeah, similar to Scott. I think he's um, he'll go with some great memories. The fans, he was a fan's favourite. Um, you know, it was very short-lived, similar to our, our previous right-back, I think. He kind of goes with the, similar with the way people thought of Frimpong. You know, he, he was part of a, a lot of good memories, but it was, what, 18 months as well. Um, so I think it's one of those... He, he, it's the right time for him to move on in his career. I totally understand that. Um, but it was, yeah, it was nice. His message was was nice that he put up on the social media. And you, you put all the clips of his his favorite kind of moments, and that's where you kind of look back. But I don't know if it's an age thing. Obviously, I was kind of around when when Larson. I was growing up watching Larson, and you know he was around for what seven years, and you know at his peak. And then when we've had other players as well, like yourself, Scott Naka. Lustig, Tierney, guys that have been long, been around for many, many years. Um, so I think nowadays, a year and a half or so, it's you, you kind of just get used to it that players will come and go. Um, and I think we'll, we're soon going to see that with Jack and Marcus as well. So they'll both go with, with our well wishes, but yeah, we move. I mean, talk, talking about those two, Scott, um, and I guess looking back at your career, what's the feeling like when you leave a club like Celtic and I, I guess you, you go to a club that's <laughs> Unless you're moving to a major club, one that's that's not as big as Celtic. Mm. Uh, empty, sort of empty. I, I think you won't. It, the grass isn't always greener. Um, you certainly won't get those tingles as much as you do um, when leaving Celtic and, and playing in front of that support and the pressure and, and the atmosphere that comes with it. Um, you kind of you hundred percent miss it. There's no question. If you if you're successful at Celtic or, or you have anything about you and you love that, then uh, once you leave, it's very hard to replicate that type of pressure and uh, atmosphere and and what it means to the fans. You know, there's only a handful of clubs in the world that have that sort of uh, feeling towards it, you know, and and the pressures that come with it and how much it means to the support. So um, it's, it's very difficult to go to a club to replicate. Henrik did as a, that was, that was one of the things he did. He, he managed to go to a, one of those handful of clubs to, to continue on. Um, uh, unfortunately for most of us, that, that's not the case. Um, but look, you'll have some special memories and uh, ones that, you know, you hold for, for the rest of your life and your career. So um, look, he, he's done exceptionally well to, to get from Poland to, to Celtic and then to play for his national team. And, and now he goes on to a club that's obviously financially rewarding him heavily um, to go across to the Bundesliga so you know he goes with my best wishes and I'm sure all the Celtic fans 
Yes, he does indeed. Uh, we did get a, a kind of comment in from Charlie Duran or Duran uh, saying, don't want to start reading tea leaves here, but Angie's comments about agreeing with Josip leaving since we all have short careers gives me the fear. Uh, there have been a couple of throwaway lines in that direction of late and Ange doesn't tend to say things he doesn't mean. You're both kind of smiling. Should we be worried about this at all, Scott? No, no, absolutely not. You know, there's been enough attention around Ange to tell you that he's here for a good while yet. You know, like uh, if he wanted to leave, he probably could have had had done by now. Um, he well and truly believes and firmly that uh, he's in the right place. Um Let's just enjoy it for the now. Um, and I think he'll be here for a couple more seasons, um, at least, you know, in my eyes. Uh, I don't think he's one to turn his back on now. He knows what the club is and what it means to individuals and what it means to him. And to leave a legacy behind, I think, is important for him. Yeah, I, I think what really gives Ange enjoyment and excitement and satisfaction is bringing great memories to, to places and, and having his team spoken about for years and I think he's got a lot to do with Celtic and, and obviously we're talking about Europe mainly uh, with regards to that but hopefully some more domestic trophies as well. Uh, the quote asked him was, he just wants to maximise his opportunities to be honest, I agree with him, that's what all of us have in our careers, a limited time and we want to take opportunities. Uh, did I see you in a debate on Twitter about this with someone? I feel like I might have I, yeah, I did pick up on it. It might not be a popular opinion. I don't think there's anything to be worried about immediately. But end of the day, it's you know the the quotes regarding Juranovic and being later in his career they could equally apply to to Ange in terms of he's obviously got his first big move to to European football, and he's he's succeeding and he's doing well. So naturally, he's going to be touted for for the bigger leagues. I don't think he's like you say in a rush to just go anywhere. But uh, I do think you know maybe. And the same with every manager, there comes a point where they'll 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 look elsewhere as well. And um, I think the key will be next season in terms of how we we do in Europe. Um, I think you're right. I don't think there's any kind of rush for Ange. It seems like he's the kind of guy who puts a lot of importance in family life and and how settled he is in life as well. And by all accounts, he and his family are happy up here. So I think that will play a big factor as well. But I think he'll want to give it another crack at Europe next season in the Champions League, hopefully. And, and see how far he can take this club. Um, but yeah, just that quote, it's kind of reminded me of some of the things that Rogers used to say in his kind of second, third oh, season. Oh, don't say just, that, don't say that. No, but I don't think it's with the same... Like, with Rogers, it almost felt like he always had his eye on that right from right from the start. Like, I, you know, I don't think it's like that with Ange at all. But naturally, it, you know, the, the quotes, you could say that they're relevant also for, for someone like Ange. You know, he's, he's got, he's ambitious, he, he knows what he can achieve, so naturally at one point he'll want to, to see how far he can go as well. Look, I, I think the reality is, guys, though, in terms of the, you know, the football landscape these days, though, you have to be prepared for this. It, managers now only last, you know, if you're looking at down in England, it's 11 months. That's the, the, the actual average of what a manager would last. However, you know, in, in Celtic reigns, if you're successful, it's probably around the three, four year period that you, you're seeing managers, you know, come and go. So, you know, if we're anywhere around that, then you're, you're going to be around the halfway period at the end of this season. I don't think you'll be going anywhere any you know, anytime soon, but it's something that we just have to have reality on that, you know, things do change as much as probably at the moment you don't want that change, but there's nothing to fear, I don't think, at the moment for any Celtic fan that, and just isn't well and truly focused on what he's doing at Celtic. Uh, on the subject of things changing, what about Jorgius Yakimakis, Scott? What, what, what do you think? Do you think he's going to leave this week? That, that's kind of the way I'm leaning. Um, but I guess until we get that definitive report, probably from Fabrizio Romano or someone like that, um, he's he's still a Celtic player. But what do you think? Look, uh, my opinion has not changed from a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the same issue. I think it's exactly the same position. It's just these things in the transfer window like to take their time. Um, everyone's trying to get the best deal for them possible, whether that be Celtic as a club or the club that's trying to obviously attain Yakimakis or even what Yakimakis wants financially to go. I think it's only a matter of time, um, but it was, I think this transfer was always going to happen in this window. 
Yeah, I think um, you can tell that it's going to happen soon. I think it's just a case of which club he goes to now. I think there's this kind of two in the front line, it seems. But by all accounts, it looked like Japan were the team in Japan were the the front runners. Um, and it looks like we again we've we've got our replacement ready. I know it's not been announced or anything like that, but um, it seems pretty likely that we're going to get um, O in from. Um, I can't remember the name team that he's from, but uh, Samsung yeah, Blue Wings. Think, um, that's the one. Um, Blue Wings, yep. Uh, so yeah, I I love how we're kind of always proactive. We're not going to be scrambling, all, you know, in the last day of the window trying to get another striker in. We've, we've looks like we've got our guy in. So yeah, I think we'll see both of these um, in incoming and outgoing announced probably in the next few days. Uh, Moritz Yen set to leave immediately too. Scott Burns at the Daily Record reporting that, uh, saying the defender has, quote, grown frustrated with his lack of playing time. Uh, he's not played a single minute since we came back after the World Cup. A single minute. Um, which I think kind of suggests that he's he's not really in Ange's plan. So again, my my opinion on this is it's one that, that kind of makes sense. I don't. I think Jens has been fine. I don't think he's been a bad Celtic player at all. Um, even in the Champions League, I thought he was all right. But I think it kind of um, makes sense if he's not in Ange's first team plans, and, and clearly Kobayashi now is. Um, I guess it's one of those, Scott, that, that he kind of leaves our, our best wishes as well. It didn't really work out, but he can go and further his career and, and we can get on with things as well. Right, guys, if you let me let me assume uh, for a minute that Moritz Jens is going to leave, that Yakimakis is going to leave, and that Oh Hyun Gyu is going to come in, uh, the Celtic squad will look something like this, guys. So... Uh, as you can see, we've got all the January players in. We've, we've taken away the ones that have left or are likely to left, uh, likely to leave. W what's your thoughts looking at this, Asim? We'll, we'll start with you. I mean, how how does that team, uh, how does that squad look? And uh, are there kind of other deals you want to see us do between now and the end of the window? Yeah, the squad's looking strong. Uh, you can see the strength and depth that Scott mentioned earlier. You've got competition in every position. Um, you you know you wouldn't you we've all probably got our ideas of what we think our strongest lineup is, but you can easily tweak different positions and that especially that kind of front attacking four, and you'd find you will be equally as strong. Um, left back, I wonder I wonder if that's an area that we might still be looking at. Um, Greg Taylor's obviously been brilliant. Bernabe's came in, he's been okay. Um, I think we'll see how he develops, and again, and for you know, he's he's came over from a completely different type of football and continent. So I'm not one to kind of jump and say that he's not going to cut it at Celtic, but you know, I still think there are he's got quite a bit of developing to do. So I wonder if that's an area where again, and he's he's quite ruthless. He might have looked at him and thought, right, I don't know if he's going to he's going to be pushing that um, Greg Taylor for a first team spot anytime soon, especially going into again the European campaign next season. So I wonder if that's an area we might be looking at either now or again in summer. Um, but other than that, yeah, it looks strong. I think I spoke to you earlier whether we might still be in for another striker as well. Um, so that's one to keep an eye on. On top of O, possibly. So on so. top of O, yeah, I think I think there could st we could still be in the hunt for another one. Um, this chat that the the offer for Cho is still there. Um, you know, so again, that might be one that could resurface in summer if he's if he's planning to stay in South Korea for now. So again, one to keep an eye on. Scott, is it is it more about losing a couple of players uh, between now and the end of the window? Yeah, I would agree with that, Hamish. I don't think there's too much to strengthen um, from you know Andrew's perspective. You always want choices, but. I think probably the the centre midfields uh, at the moment that there's a couple in there that you could say that are surplus to requirements. Look, Abelgard has been rumoured to to be going for a while now. Uh, Idaguchi is, is just not played uh, or fitted in or settled in. Uh, could he go back to to the J League? Um, and look, James McCarthy. I don't think really anyone really knows what's what's going on with James if he's fit or if he's not fit at the moment. But look, James won't be going anywhere. Um, but if you look at when you say centre mids, there, there's only really one going to play out of that list. There, you know, the rest are going to come more or less from above there, apart from probably a Wata and and Moy, you know, that could play and Callum might play a bit further ahead. So I think your your options there. You've still got six midfielders vying for three spots, even if. 
you looked at Abergard and Idaguchi and McCarthy as you know non existent to that squad, you're still healthy in that area. So I think if they if there was deals to be done for Celtic, then uh, I don't think it would be bad business. Right, uh, Scott has just dropped off there. He's been having a couple of wee internet issues, ask him. So it's just me and you. I'm literally just rounding up the video anyway. Uh, I wanted to say we do have uh, a rearranged date for the game against Hearts. It'll take place on Wednesday the 8th of March at 7.45. Under the lights, a game against Hearts under the lights is always pretty nice. Uh, we're back in action at Tannadice on Sunday, 4 p.m., for that, first of three league games in the space of a week, we've got Livingston at home and St Johnson away as well. Uh, so a good opportunity to get some some points, mate. Uh, looking forward to it. the next kind of couple of weeks transfer stuff and, and this, three, um, three big league games. Yeah, it's a weird one not having a midweek fixture this week, um, but yeah, I think we've had a nice run of um, home games there, and now we've got um, Tannadice, which is always uh, a good a good one as well, and. Hopefully, uh, three three games in a week, just tick them off one by one. Um, and yeah, we'll just head into February in a strong position. So yeah, looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm, th- I'm sure we'll, we'll pick up the points as, as we go. Yes, right. I'll say goodbye. I'll be back on Friday. I am writing over at 67heelheel.com. In the meantime, so if you, you're getting uh, withdrawal symptoms for whatever reason, check me out. Uh, on there, as I say, back on Friday, building ahead to the game at Tanadice.